Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I'm gonna be working with the mixer brush inside of Photoshop to show you how to create this stripe ribbon style accent. Before we get into making the brush itself, I wanna do a quick overview of how the mixer brush works. So I'm gonna start with a new document here. I'm gonna go ahead and add a new layer so I can give you an example of how this works. I already have the mixer brush loaded right here uh, and I'm gonna go through how to create all of the samples and everything that you're going to need to make the ribbon. First, let's just get started with the mixer brush itself. This is the mixer brush. So you'll see that little droplet right there. So if you click on the brush tool, it'll be somewhere in there unless you have it saved somewhere else. But um, usually it's going to be inside of the brush tool. So you would just click and hold the brush tool until this flyout menu comes out and then grab it from there. Once you have the mixer brush selected, you're going to have all of these options available for you up here. Right here is the brush that you've selected. So you can come in here and choose a brush or you can choose a brush uh, right here from your brushes menu. This little swatch right here is called the reservoir. This is where you hold your paint. So if you're doing a traditional painting, you'll have a paint palette or uh, a paint bucket even. So this is basically where you have mixed your paint. You're dipping your paintbrush inside of this reservoir and it's going to paint out whatever you put into this uh, little reservoir right here. So when we paint out those stripes, it's painting them out in that way because of the way we've set up the little image uh, or the paint that is inside of the reservoir. Okay, in the reservoir, there's a little drop down menu right here. You want to make sure that load brush is selected and that you do not have load solid colors only. You want to make sure that you're able to load the entire pattern that we have in there in order to get the stripes that we're gonna be creating. So just make sure that that is selected. For wetness, if I have 0% wetness, which means it's a dry brush, I can come in here and paint this and then I can paint over it and it's not going to affect the strokes that I've already created because it's a dry brush. It's almost as if the stroke that I painted underneath it has already dried by the time I started my second strokes. So if I go back and I take my wetness all the way up to 100%, I can make those same strokes. But you can see how the paint is interacting. I can come back and the paint is going to interact much differently than it does when it's dry. So if I take my load to 1% and I start to draw, you'll see that I run out of paint right away. That's because I've barely tipped my brush into the reservoir. I've only loaded it 1%. So if I take it up to 100%, it means I've saturated that brush with paint so I can come in and paint as much as I want because I have 100% load on the brush. Uh, with 50%, I'll run out of paint quicker, but I'll have longer strokes than I did at 1%. So that is the load. And you can see that mix is grayed out right now. That's because wet is at zero. So let me take my wetness up to 30% and you'll see that now I have that mix available. Now I can adjust my mix for my wetness and my load. And then you have flow, which is like any other brush. If you have it at 100%, you're getting a nice saturated paint. And if you have it at 1%, you're getting nothing. This is called smoothing. So if you're familiar with Procreate and you like that streamline feature, this is Photoshop's version of the streamline feature. So basically what it does is, so I have it set to 100% right now. That means it's smoothing out my strokes. If I take that down to 0%, you can see that it's much more jagged here toward this area and it's not going to give me the smoothness of the stroke that I get here when Photoshop is helping me do it. Keep in mind if you're sampling all layers, that means that when you click here to sample something, it's going to sample every single layer that you have here. So if you want to sample something from one specific layer, you need to make sure that sample all layers is turned off. So I'm going to come in here and you'll see how it's picking up the white of this background layer when I paint. And you can see that when I turn that 
white background layer off, I'm keeping that white paint. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on and back out of all of that stuff. And I am going to add a new layer, turn off sample all layers. So when I start painting again, you can see that I am not picking up any of that white. Um, and that's because I have sample all layers turned off. I'm just using what's in the reservoir at the moment. And if I turn that off, I'm not picking up any of that white. So now that we understand what the mixer brush is and how it works, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make that ribbon brush. Now I do have another video to make things like icing and spaghetti and you know different things like that using the mixer brush. I'll go ahead and link to that video down below as well. You'd be surprised all of the things that you can do with the mixer brush so definitely check that out if you're interested. But for now let's go ahead and get started on this brush. So I'm going to come here to my shape tool and I am going to choose the ellipse tool. It doesn't have to be an ellipse. It can be any shape. We're just trying to make this pattern. And in fact, you can use this whole block if you wanted to, to create the shape. But I'm going to just make some small shapes here. The most important thing to know is that you need to have a rasterized shape or, you know, a pixel based uh, shape because what we're doing is we're picking up pixels and we're painting with those. So I'm going to go ahead and make this about 300 pixels by 300 pixels. Now, since a shape is vector based, we wouldn't be able to sample from this. We'd have to go back and rasterize this. If you don't see all of this stuff, make sure to press the letter U on your keyboard to bring that up. That's going to bring up all the shape tools. And we're going to click on this little swatch for the fill. I have some gradients right here. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this one. I'll go ahead and leave a download on my website for these as well, just in case you want those. Any type of gradient is fine. So once I have that gradient in there, I'm going to right click and rasterize this layer. I'm going to duplicate it a couple of times because I want you to see the different effects that adding different filters is going to make with this brush. So I'm going to press command and the letter J twice. Letter V, I'm just going to bring this one over here and just, um, you know, spread them out. Okay, and we're going to start with this first one. I'm going to add some noise to this. I'm going to come here to filter, noise, add noise, take it up to 80% noise. My distribution is uniform and I have uh, monochromatic unchecked. I'm going to go ahead and click OK for that. I'm going to do the same thing to the second one. So I'll come up here to filter and then add noise. So it's the exact same filter. This one, I'll go ahead and leave it as it is. For this second one, I'm going to come back up here to filter, noise, and I'm going to add dust and scratches. So it's just going to blur out that really hard noise that we have right here. I'll leave the radius at four pixels and my threshold at zero. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So I'm just going to grab this top one, shift grab the last one. That'll grab all three of them. Command and the letter E to merge those. So I have one layer. This is a raster layer. So these are no longer shapes. And I'm just going to put them down here at the bottom for now. So once we have our reservoirs created, I'm going to come into my brushes over here. If you don't have this here, you can come up here to window and brushes from there. And I'm going to choose a specific brush from Legacy Brushes. So if you do not have your Legacy Brushes here, you can come to this little hamburger menu and choose Legacy Brushes here to load those in. So once you have Legacy Brushes in there, you'll just click on Legacy Brushes. We're going to come here to Default Brushes. Okay, we're going to go ahead and scroll down. Okay, so here after Spatter, um, you have all of these brushes right here. We're going to choose this one right here. It's called Chalk 60 Pixels. And then we're going to come into the settings. That's this little icon right here. Once you have that selected, again, that's Window Brush Settings. If you don't have that here, here, all we're going to do is in Brush Tip Shape, make sure that that is set to 1. And I'm going to go ahead and leave it like that for now. Okay, make sure that you're in the mixer brush tool here and make sure that sample all layers is not selected. Make sure that you are in your reservoir layer right here. 
I'm on a Mac, so it's going to be Option for me. If you're on a PC, it will be Alt. And then you'll see this little target right there. So go ahead and click inside there. I'm going to try to keep it the same for all of these. So maybe I'll just come right around here where the blue starts and just click right there. And I'm going to make sure to bring my wetness down to zero. Okay, so I'm on my drawing layer. Let me go ahead and label this so we know. This is the drawing layer. This one right here is our reservoir. So I'm on the drawing layer and I'm going to come in and just make a stroke here. And you can see that this is a very thick stroke. So it looks more like taffy or something like that. This is a nice stroke as well. But what I want to do is go for that really thin ribbony style. So I'm going to come back in here to the brush settings and I'm just going to work here with the angle and the roundness. So roundness, I think I'm going to take it to about 10%. So it's just squeezing it there. It's making it much flatter. And then uh, maybe I'll take my angle. I want to be really careful with this because if you can see right here, you know, it starts to give you jagged edges. So you have to be really careful with the angle that you choose. So I think I'll go ahead and leave it at about 15, negative 15 uh, for this one and see what that looks like. So let's try that one. You can see it's much flatter. So you're getting that ribbon effect and that is exactly what we were going for. But we're using the exact same brush here. All I did was flatten it on this one and you can see the difference in color variation already between those two brushes. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one. I'll remake that first one and just draw out that first ribbon. Okay, now I'm going to come back to my reservoir and I'm going to show you this one. So I'm going to just hit option, click right there, and then go back to the drawing layer and then draw that one out. So you can see the difference in this ribbon versus this one. So this is much more noisy, busy. This one's a little smoother. And then if we come back here to the reservoir and we choose this area of that one, come back to the drawing layer and you're, you'll see you're getting something much smoother. It still looks really nice. It's like this 3D look to it, but you're not getting these stripes that you're getting in these two. So it is the same brush. They're just different color variations. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off and I'm going to put in a new one. I'm going to come back to the reservoir and then come here to the center and then just, you know, sample from there, come back up here. And you can see that you get a much different look from that even. So just this one brush can get you a whole bunch of different looks, uh, you know, just by the areas and the textures that you're sampling. So I just wanted to show you that if you want to play with these brushes and sample. I also put together a few little samples for you too, so you can work with those. So if you want to pick that up, you can go to my website. It is free there. I'm going to come back in here to the brush settings and I'm going to just drag my roundness out to 100% again. I just want to show you what this looks like as a wet brush. So I'm going to take my wetness all the way up to 100%. It's the same selection that we have. So we have the same thing in the reservoir, but I just want to show you the difference in color that you can get from these. So you can see we're getting much more of a like a shiny metallic look from this one versus this one. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, make sure to like and share it. Also, if you like this little social media template, I'm going to have this available for those of you who are on my email list. I'm working on putting together a collection of freebies for everybody on my email list. So this is going to be part of that for now. Let me just show you how this works. So I have this right here. Um, this is a smart object. You would just double click right here and it has the image in here. So you would just pop in any image that you want here. You just go, you can drag in your image, close that we'll go ahead and save it and whatever image you popped into that smart object is going to show up right here we have these accents you know you can choose between uh, one or the other and then we have different backgrounds and stuff that you can choose from but again look for this coming soon to my email list if you don't want to miss another video make sure to subscribe to this youtube channel and as always visit prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials until next time thanks for watching